the big news this week. I mean, I really, I really don't want to talk about the Olympics anymore. But how can I avoid it when, of course, we continue to have the uh, never-ending Olympics drama? We had the uh, Olympics minister, um, LDP cabinet uh, minister um, uh, Seiko Hashimoto, um, who actually I didn't connect all the dots, but yes, indeed, she was a bronze medalist ski speed skater, and I think she actually was um, another type of Olympian as well, multiple sports. Um, and anyway, yeah, so she um, was uh, really, I, I suppose, the only candidate uh, that people could consider for the new um, Olympics minister. The way that it happened was was that a committee uh, of prominent sort of athletes and sports administrators met behind closed doors where they would uh, decide all the candidates and they'd whittle it down. And apparently they did this without actually asking the candidates if they wanted to be candidates. So they decided behind closed doors, oh, it should be her. And then after they decided that, they said when they, when they sort of told the press that oh yes, we, there's only one candidate, you know, left, but we haven't asked her if she wants the job yet. So uh, the minister herself, who was still being a minister, she was still in government. They went and the press went in and said, hey, do you know that you're the only person? I guess it was kind of people could see it coming. As we said last week, there was talk about it going to Maury's friend, who uh, was going to appoint Maury back as an advisor, and that got kind of squashed. So there were a lot, a lot of people saying already this is the only person it could be. And indeed, she was nominated and uh, she very promptly said, yes, she'll take the job. Um, in order to take the job, she uh, is obviously stepping down as a government minister. And in fact, it was then suggested that uh, she should also not remain a member of the LDP, the, the government party, just uh, to in order, in order to avoid the politicization or use of the um, her role as the Olympics lead for political purposes. So she resigned from the LDP and it all, it all looked like a bit of a win. I haven't included it in here, but there was one slight thing about this Olympics minister. I mean, pretty much like everybody, frankly, especially in the LDP, but certainly in politics, there was a kerfuffle um, a few years ago, uh, which made a bit of a, a bit of a splash. Uh, so yes, as the um, at the night at the 2014 Sochi Olympics, uh, Seiko Hashimoto, she was actually the head of the Japanese Olympics delegation. So you know how. Um, you know, all the teams at the Olympics and these things, they'll always have sort of like the uh, chief of the mission or, or whatever they call them, um, who's sort of like is the administrator in charge of the entire thing. So, you know, they're sort of the most senior. And, and this is the sort of role that Mori would play if Japan was going uh, to a different country for the Olympics. Probably Mori would travel with the team as the person in charge of the entire team, the chief administrator. Um, of course, you know, in Hashimoto-san's case, she started out as, as an athlete herself, and then she became sort of the senior administrator uh, going on the tour over to the, to the Olympics in Russia. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I suppose that's where this kind of comes into it a little bit, although, yeah, he didn't, he didn't help. There was, a, there was an incident that happened, apparently. There was a, during a party towards the end of the Olympics, there, there, among the celebrities uh, of the uh, Winter Olympics team that was going over to Russia, um, the, there were a couple of male ice skaters in particular that were, uh, were like, a bit like idols in Japan. They have their own sort of groupies and, and their sort of fans who follow around after them. And one of them, uh, Daisuke Takahashi, I think was his name, uh, who's kind of famous and a bit of, bit of a heartthrob. So at the time, um, you know, I guess this is six years ago, so she was about 50 years old. Uh, yeah, there was a, there was a, a party. Um, towards the end in Russia uh, being held by the Olympic group and apparently at the party in front of everybody a slightly inebriated head of the mission Seiko Hashimoto uh, took it upon herself to um, sort of plant uh, f a couple of, of kisses on the mouth <laughs> of, of the sort of uh, heartthrob uh, sort of uh, ice skating athlete and apparently Photos were everywhere there, and uh, they, they, they were picked up by one of the tabloids, and the tabloids said at the time that, uh, you know, the head of the Japanese Olympic delegation just sort of drunkenly threw herself upon one of the star athletes and started kissing him. You know, it was kind of a mild form, <laughs> maybe not even mild, people didn't say, they said there's a sexual harassment in this day and age, you know, the head of, the head of a sports delegation <laughs> drunkenly, you know, unwelcomingly kissing. Uh, kissing um one of the junior you know popular athletes uh, probably i mean thank heavens it wasn't mori i suppose but but should it make a difference is it a double standard if it's a woman doing it to a man um in any case um at the time there was uh, the immediate reaction and the photos are everywhere you know it was sort of like oh this is a power harassment or sexual harassment this is uh, a senior administrator abusing their position on the team to take advantage of an athlete the athlete very awkwardly 
and with a slightly hostage looking eyes sort of looking away appealing for help said no it's okay i don't think it was sexual harassment and the whole episode was kind of put behind at the time she obviously embarrassed and said that she'd be careful how she'd conduct herself but of course the story immediately as soon as it came out that she was going to be the new head of the the, the olympics it immediately came out that oh yeah she didn't she um you know, possibly uh, sexually assault one of the players in front of everybody and photographed in public while drunk um, at a party at the Russian Olympics. It is, is that is that okay? Uh, and while it came up and everyone had a bit of a laugh about it, uh, I suppose. I mean, it's, at least to the extent that the athlete himself says that he, you know, he, he's okay. Um, in the end of the day, uh, yeah, it, did, it, 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 it came up, but it didn't come up to the extent that anyone thought that there was honestly anyone better for this job. And when, of course, when they asked her about it, she said, yeah, she's still extremely embarrassed about the whole thing. And it was inappropriately and she learned, you know, she'll never do that again. So, of course, the inevitable questions came up and that should have been the end of it. But, um, yeah, uh, obviously, you know, this is the LDP and um, you can't just leave uh, an opportunity to make a uh, to make an awkward situation uh, worse. <laughs> Who could do that? So apparently, uh, a fellow member of the LDP uh, thought he'd help out by explaining to the press what he really, you know, what he really thought about the the Seiko Hashimoto situation. How the press shouldn't be making a fuss about that old sexual assault, sexual harassment allegation from her drunkenly, um, unwelcomingly, uh, multiple times kissing one of the uh, athletes in the delegation that she was leading. Uh, at, a, at a party <laughs> he said that basically um, this guy Takeshita uh, Ina uh, uh, yeah, Takeshita Gig anyway a guy from the LDP he explained you guys you don't get it see the thing about uh, the thing about Hashimoto-san is that she's like a dude she's like one of us so to her you know it's totally natural she's just like a guy she of course she wants to go and hugging you know kiss all the young you know athletes you know that's just she's just acting like one of us <laughs> Uh, and he said, you know, and I think it's being a bit tough on her to say that, uh, you know, I feel sorry for everyone saying that that's sexual harassment. She doesn't mean any harm. That's just how she is. <laughs> I just loved it. Like, you know, just when, just when you think the situation was kind of bad and was kind of awkwardly being put behind and she just apologized again and we're about to get on with business. He just came and said, everybody stop stop <laughs> stop talking about the sexual harassment you know she can't help it she's just like one of us uh yes so of course uh <laughs> I don't know, he just, uh, it's just amazing how, I, I swear to God, I think that the movie Brewster's Millions, where like, you know, the guy's just got to spend all the money on purpose and, and sabotage himself and no one's allowed to know why, I'm just sure that's what the LDP is, I mean, it's just like, he's just saying the worst possible thing. But anyway, we somehow got through all of that, and, and the thing is, uh, myself included, even knowing that, and even acknowledging that, yeah, there probably is a double standard here, that uh, you know, people are not, certainly, I mean, if could you imagine the situation if it was a young female ice skater had been, like, drunkenly, sexually assaulted, like, basically an unwelcome kiss, but that's what it is nowadays, I mean, you know. Uh, if if Morty had done that, could you imagine? I mean, you know, there wouldn't be any discussion. And it's probably true to some extent that maybe Hashimoto-san's getting a pass for it. But in the end of the day, <sighs> there's no one else. There's no one else. Uh, and it's awkward enough and it is now behind us. And I must admit, it's still the thing. I mean, look, regardless of, you know, who's the new captain of the Titanic, um, fact is, the boat is listing. You know, <laughs> the, the iceberg has been hit. I don't see any way that it still is going to make sense, apart from the fact that there's no way the people in Japan are going to be vaccinated or, you know, that there's, it's going to be safe here. Having 100,000 athletes and administrators from every country in the world come to Japan, come to Tokyo, like, how, how is this going to work? Unless they, they do what they did in the Australian Open, I mean, which which no one's talking about doing. So I still think that really, in the end of the day, the mission of the New Olympics League should be to find a, a delicate way to let it all down and, and cancel the thing. But uh, that's not what's happening. But yeah, never waste a good opportunity to make an awkward situation <laughs> worse. So that's what's going on with the Olympics. And I sincerely hope that I have nothing to report other than the cancellation of the Olympics. Uh, going forward, but uh, you know, this is Japan. I'm sure we're going to keep getting more awkward stories about that.